All right, so good morning. We are here with our summer tech school class, Create a PowerPoint Photo Album. So my name's Nicole Totten. I work upstairs at the Leavesburg Public Library in the Adult Servants Reference Department. I have our phone number here. If you have any trouble, or feel free to let me know in the chat. All right, let me go ahead and make sure I want to see this. All right. So this morning we're coming together for a really fun topic, PowerPoint. Uh, it's one of the Microsoft Office suite. So it's, it's definitely useful to know whether you're using it for personal or business. We'll get into that. So after I've introduced myself here, let's get on to it. So some things we're gonna be covering today, I kind of outlined what our agenda will be. So you've got the email materials, you have the template and handouts. Uh, you'll have a copy of this presentation. You'll have a copy of the template that I'm walking you through today. And I also included a template um, PDF handout of instruction. So if after class, you couldn't remember quite what we did, it's included there. And like I said, this will be also uploaded to YouTube. So you'll be able to refresh on anything you need there. I'll kind of quickly go through what's PowerPoint, why is it useful, why a photo album, you know, what we're doing here, what our outcomes can be today, and more resources, because we're kind of going over the basics today, but there's definitely some advanced functions once you master the basics. And this, excuse me, this class is geared toward a beginning user. So we're just trying to get a foundation in there, start working on some PowerPoints, and at a later time, you can feel free to refresh on some advanced topics with those more resources. So I'll be doing the presentation, and then I'll be doing a live demonstration where we go through the template together and I can show you how to customize different aspects to make it your own because right now the template that I provided is something I customized for like a summer vacation theme but you can make it anything you want anything you like and then like I said at the end it's going to be a Q&A session where we go over questions we can share screens I can give you tips on your own PowerPoints So a little bit about PowerPoint. What is PowerPoint? So PowerPoint is a visual presentation program. It was first developed by Forthought Inc. in 1987. So it's been around a while. When it first was developed, it was bought three months later by Microsoft. They obviously thought it was a novel concept. So they snapped it up for a mere $14 million. So they knew they had something special on their hands. Just a few years later, it became part of Microsoft Suite which you'll be familiar with if you use Word or Excel in your everyday life. Microsoft Suite was designed to be a common productivity task program set. So it's supposed to help you get through your day-to-day -day, like Excel spreadsheets, Word is word processing, anything you kind of need in your day-to-day -day business and personal life, they tried to make a geared program towards. So PowerPoint, since it started back in 1987, started with being creative for transparencies, which is kind of hard to believe now with so few that we see now in transparencies. And then it developed into a 35 millimeter slideshow, eventually went on to become used for digital projectors and then became computer-based as computers became widely available. And now you can even use it web-based in your browser. So it's come a long way from transparencies to now web access. So it, it's been around a while and they definitely have fine-tuned it for the modern day and what we expect here. Next. So why PowerPoint? PowerPoint seems to have a little less notoriety than the rest of the Microsoft Office suite, which is because it can be used for a wide range of things and it, yeah, people don't always realize the, the broad spectrum of what PowerPoint can be used for. So some examples of projects that you can be completed are photo albums, which is what we're gonna do here today. Different presentations. So they, they have a business section of their presentations, which more, more sleek, more modern, more infographics kind of thing, where you can show different graphs, but you can also do personal presentations. Um, for instance, my little sister, when she was younger, did a PowerPoint presentation on why she should get a bigger allowance. So you can definitely use it for personal persuasion. You can use it for education. Um, if you take any sort of college class in, in the business um, education, you'll, you'll definitely come across a need for PowerPoint in your class, uh, especially for group projects and stuff like that. I've, I've had to complete quite a few PowerPoints for my college classes. 
and business administration. So another use is infographics. They have a lot of templates for different infographics to make certain flyers, to present certain data. I know Excel kind of gets the reputation of the program you want to use for presenting data because it also has a lot of graph functions. But you can make um, very sleek, really nice graphic designed infographics and flyers and PowerPoint with not as much advanced setting as you do in, in Excel. Excel can be very kind of tech heavy depending on the, the function you're using. And PowerPoint kind of slims that down to be more simplistic and more easy to use. So there's some examples of some things we can complete in PowerPoint. So just bear that in mind. Um, the biggest thing you want to bring to using PowerPoint is your creativity. Definitely have an idea in mind, what you hope to accomplish, and a certain design aspect. And it, PowerPoint is pretty much just limited to what you can imagine. So creativity is a big feature since it is so designed to be a bright, bold, beautiful visual presentation. Like I said, it's a visual presentation program. So the emphasis is on the visual. So we want it to be pretty, we want it to be creative, all that. All right, so that's why PowerPoint. Now, what is a PowerPoint photo album? What makes a PowerPoint a PowerPoint? So PowerPoints are, present, are presented as a collection of design slides. So I think of it to explain it to someone who's not familiar with PowerPoint, it would be almost as if you have a book and the slides are the pages. You have a cover, you have the pages, you have an ending. And PowerPoint is very similar to that. It's just a collection of certain squares that you designed that you can click to present. Within PowerPoint is the idea of a template. And templates are these quick and easy slide default settings that Microsoft makes available to its users. And it just takes away a lot of the advanced work of making PowerPoint. So it just, it kind of gives you like a prescribed different design setting. So for example, I use a template for this presentation. So it has like the graphic design on the right side. It knew the title, what it should look like, what the color should be. So everything looked very sleek and very designed and very modern. So this is an idea of a, what a template looks like too. A photo album, while we, when it comes to mind a photo album, we think of the physical book photo album. A photo album is also a category of a template. So it's also a category of a PowerPoint. So they have different PowerPoints geared to certain purposes. And what we're gonna be looking today is at PowerPoint's photo album. So they specifically made a PowerPoint with presenting photos in mind. So everything is gonna be geared around the photos. Everything's gonna be geared around presenting the photos in the best light with any corrections or changes or any effects you want to make to that. So that's kind of the difference between a photo album and any other presentation in a photo album for Microsoft PowerPoint. The photo album is designed to showcase the photo in the best light. And so we'll be customizing one today. Like I said, this is, this is an example of a PowerPoint template and we'll be going over our own photo album template. So don't get lost in the weeds with me now. We have a lot more to go over. It'll be clear as we use it, just trying to explain some definitions and everything as we go into it, because this is geared towards beginning users. So I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page with terminology first. So the outcomes of creating a PowerPoint photo album. So you may think, oh, I'm making a photo album and beyond viewing and PowerPoint, what can I do with it? So before creating, have an end goal in mind. Like for me, one of the big, ticket ideas of using PowerPoint is creating a slideshow of baby photos. Uh, I have a one-year-old. So with everything being social distance and COVID right now, um, our family doesn't always get to come around as often as we would like. So I make a PowerPoint, send that off to my family and friends, they can view it. But another cool thing about it is you can use PowerPoint's design slides to print them and make them into a book. You can send them off to be made into a book by an outside company. So I go over a little bit of that here of what I mean. So when keeping in mind what your design will be, excuse me one second, I'm just gotta do a little bit of housekeeping. Two seconds. And good morning, Mary, welcome. Oh. Hi, thank you, I'm sorry I'm late. I No worries. Underestimated. <laughs> no problem. All right. Okay. 
So to pick up where we left off, Mary, I was just explaining a little bit of what PowerPoint is, what we're doing here with the PowerPoint photo album. And, you know, if we're using a PowerPoint photo album, what can we make of it? What is the outcome? And that's where we are here. So do you want to share this with family and friends? That's a quick and easy use. You can easily share via email, just like I shared the templates that we're using today to you via email. You can share that with family and friends, your completed PowerPoints. Another option is you can print your album at home. So if you have a nice printer with quality paper and ink, you can print your, your photo album very nicely at home. Another aspect is you could professionally print your album through an outside vendor. Um, a lot of services, a lot of printing services, like through, not to endorse anybody, but you know, like a local, like CVS or Walgreens has printing services that you can take your PowerPoint to and they'll print it into a book style for you. You can also do it through online sources. You can professionally print and have your album binded really nicely in a certain way to really be like a family heirloom keepsake. The, the nicer quality you're going to run into, the more cost it it requires so it, you want to keep in mind like what your your budget will be with that if you do go the route of trying to have someone else outside print your powerpoint so that's just an idea of you know what are we doing with it what do we want to do with it i tend to use it just to share via email you know, sending everyone a book sometimes is a little bit more costly than just sending a quick email and not to mention the time it takes to you know fine-tune the details of what i want my book to look like that's a lot of options for me so I have an example here of what a book would look like. So these are just some things you want to keep in mind before even, you know, when you go, oh, I want to make a family photo album. I want to make a photo album for this occasion, a birthday photo album, a summer vacation photo album. What do you want the end goal to be with who you're sharing with it and how it's presented? So on to the next one. So we're going to be heading into our template. So that was just a little explanation on what PowerPoint is, what we can do with it, why it's useful, and what we want the end goal to be. So I'm going to be switching screens here. You'll see me switch over into the template you were emailed. All right. Do a new screen share here. All right. So this should look very similar to what you received in your email. I had to take out a few pictures, so it's a little bit big when we try to send it out, but we'll be adding them back in. All right, and note that these are just stock photo pictures. You'll be substituting your own, you know, pictures, for whichever theme you want, you know, what you're designing your book, your template for. Okay, so before we delve into anything, I want to take this as like a beginning user perspective and just explain what we're looking at here. Let's see if I can get my mouse to show up. <laughs> so it does not want to. So I'm going to do is rotate. So across the top here, and I think you'll be able to see me kind of drawing a circle around it. There is this menu across the top that's pretty commonplace in all Microsoft programs. This is called, this whole menu is called the ribbon. They try to make their programs kind of similarly set up so they're really easy to use. So you'll see this in Word, you'll see this in Excel different settings for sure, but same concept where you have a, a large menu across the top. And here we have tabs. So you hear me reference tabs and they're across the top here. There's different ones we can click on. They look like that. All right. And then within the tabs are these items called groups. And that's just how they're organizing their functions. So that way it's easy to find. So this is a group right here, the clipboard group under home. And so just so we have a little bit of terminology, we have the ribbon, tabs up top, and then groups underneath. And then everything individually within the group is the function. So let me go ahead and erase my nice artwork. All right. I'm probably just going to keep the draw tool on so that way I'll do a red so you can really see me. Oh, maybe the mouse will. Okay. Looks like my mouse is back. That's good news. All right, so I have a checklist here of everything I wanted to make sure to go over so I don't forget a single thing. All right, so as I was explaining to you guys, there is a pretty quick shortcut to making a really nice PowerPoint and that is templates. And so what you have here is the classic template. I have edited it to be summer vacation themed. 
So the background is blue. I made the stock photos beachy. Uh, it's just very quick and easy to do. I'll show you, we're gonna stay in this template, but I'm gonna show you how you access different templates when you're on your own. So you're gonna come, I'm gonna go slow so that way in case the computer tries to give me any issue. We're gonna go up to the file tab. I click it, left click. And it's gonna bring us to this menu. It's an organization menu on the left side. And when you're wanting a new template, you'll click new. And if you wanted to create something from scratch, you would click blank presentation. But blank presentation, you have to kind of create everything on your own from scratch, as I mentioned. So there's some other items here. You'll see gallery, PowerPoint, Madison. These are different themes within templates. So you'll see here, you can search for a template if you have an idea that you want to gear towards, like you could put a beach and see if any beach PowerPoints come up. But otherwise, you can go by type and you'll go by type here. So you can click presentations and it'll show you a variety of presentations. It looks like it's really geared towards business presentation side here. And themes. Themes is going to be more of the design aspect and education. So by clicking these buttons, you can really quickly get to like a subset that's geared towards your purpose. And that's the benefit of templates. So someone's already made a really nicely designed PowerPoint that's blank for you. And you can use that as a starting point. And we have the infographics that I mentioned here at the end for different presentations and different charts diagram. So the new tab is where you're gonna wanna go to pick any new PowerPoint templates that you like. And if you don't like something you want to create it from scratch, you'll hit blank. But within here is a great starting point. There's a lot of options. And it even pulls when you search, it even pulls from their online source of templates. So you get even more options. So there's no shortage of different things to delve into here. So that's just how you can do a quick and easy start to a PowerPoint. Back out, and we're just going to click the arrow in the left top corner to exit this menu. And we're back to our template. So we're back here. So the first thing I wanted to start with is more text based. So a lot of things for text are going to happen on this home tab here that you'll see top left corner here. And you'll see a font group here. Okay, so there's a little font subgroup here. So I have a title on my PowerPoint. This is the cover page of the PowerPoint. It's the first one, which makes the cover page. So you'll see over here the order of the PowerPoint on the left side in the slideshow view. So this is just the order of the slides. And I'll show you how to change that later on. So we'll definitely go over that bit. So I named mine Summer Photo Album. To change this, you can, you can click just click directly into the text box. So I'm out of it and you just click right on it, double click and you're in it, you can change it. So I can make this, you know, summer travel photo album, any, any different title that I want, but go ahead and keep summer photo album. Since this is the title of the PowerPoint, we wanna make this nice and bold. We can change it by, there's, there's two ways to change the title. So by selecting the title, you can click and you can left click your mouse and highlight the whole word and that way you can change it as you can see here a menu automatically populates so there's there's two ways to change font here you can change it via the menu that automatically populates when you highlight and the same menu is available up in the ribbon so you'll see that in the home tab in the font group up in the ribbon you'll see the same set so in, in PowerPoint, there's usually many ways to go about doing the same task. And that's just to make it easier to use. You don't wanna have a specific hidden function somewhere that no one can get to. So you can highlight by clicking your mouse and, and just pulling the highlight through. Or what you can do if you, have, if you have trouble using the mouse, you can just click in the beginning, you can hold down the shift key, and then you can click at the end and that will also highlight it. So there's two ways to highlight. So here I can go ahead and change font. There's gonna be a drop down, and 
To make a selection, what you can do is hover. I'm not clicking anything. I've just clicked the drop down. I'm in the fonts. And you can just hover and kind of get a, a view of what it would look like if you did change fonts. So for me, you know, I'm looking for something really bold and title-like, something really nice, depending, you know, on what your purpose is. There have to have old timey fonts. Your PowerPoint comes preloaded with a lot of fonts. So there's no shortage of selection. It's just kind of scrolling. I use the the roller on my mouse to scroll down. Otherwise, you could use this little bar over here and then just still go back to hovering. All right, so you just pick something nice. This one, I'll go with that one for now. That's just preference. So it's still highlighted, so we can still make some changes. Move this menu out of the way here. Excuse me, my Zoom menu is in the way. So we have a font size of 44. Depending on the font you use, this will look bigger or smaller depending on the style font. So you can go ahead and use these two tools here. This is larger and this is smaller. So this will increase the size and then this will decrease the size. And if you're ever lost in PowerPoint, a good thing to remember is if you just hover your mouse over an item, it will exactly tell you what the purpose is. So it's very nice for if you're not sure what you're clicking on, if you're not sure, if you remember where the spot was that something was, you can change it here. So if I hover, it says increase, increase font size. I can decrease font size. So I have it back at 44, which is what it was. And from here, this is a highlight tool. So I could highlight it if I wanted to highlight. And note that highlighting is a little bit different from changing the interior of a text box. So you'll see here, this gridded line around the text. This is called the text box. This is just the space where the text exists and we can edit within there and you can move it and we'll go over that. Um, but you can see how the highlight is just around the words and not within the whole text box space. So just keep, bear in mind that highlighting is a little bit different from filling the text box. So I'll go ahead and take off the highlight. I didn't have it selected. And there we are. So I wanna go back, take off highlight, there we go. And we're gonna go over to font size, font color, excuse me. So I have only the end piece selected. Let me go back here. So stop highlighting. So yeah, sometimes the highlighter likes to linger. You can hit stop highlighting. Usually once you undo the color, it goes away, but sometimes, sometimes it does what I want. So we're gonna highlight again and we can change color here. Let's say I wanna change it to like a nice blue color for the ocean. So you have a lot of color options here. They do try to help you out a little bit in the design feature by you know, categorizing some color wheels here for you. Just complementary colors, similar to like paint chip style. And then the standard colors they have across here. If you like to use a certain color often, you'll see it in your recent colors. So whichever colors you pick last will be here. And you can even select more than this. There's a lot more colors. And you have this hexagon of colors to select from. So you can click on them and you can see what it looks like. You know, the current was white. That's what the font was before. So it'll show you the difference. So if, if it had been pink and you wanted to, you know, show it against a different pink, you would compare those here. This is just to see what, you know, the color tone difference is. All right. So let me select the blue. All right. Let's say I'm okay with that one. All right. So another option here, which I think is handy when you have really interesting color photos added to it, within the font dropdown, you can click eyedropper. So let's say I have a photo that has just sort of really distinct colors, maybe like highlighter yellow or something that I wanna exactly match my title to. You can use the eyedropper by scan. Let me just show that again to make sure. Yep. You can click the eyedropper tool. And you can go ahead on a picture and we're just looking around on the picture to find a nice blue that I like. Maybe this teal color. And it automatically makes the title that color. So that's a good way to get a really custom color to match things up if you want to match. So this is just going over some of the text features. We'll get on to photos because I know we have this nice photo here that we want to get a hold of. We'll get on to photos next. All right, so we, we made some changes to our text box. Let me make sure I on my checklist that we're going over everything that I want to include here. 
changed font, we changed font size. Um, an item that I want to go over too is how easy it is to change where your text box is. So this slide came preloaded with this text box of a title. And I can sh I'm showing you later on how to insert your own in case you, you know, maybe you want the title somewhere else, maybe you want to add two titles, we don't know. So when you're in the text box here, you'll see when you hit the grid line that there is a four-way arrow here. And that's just to show you that you're in kind of a moving position mode. So I can go ahead and move my title anywhere I want. All right. And you'll notice that as of right now, the title is going underneath the picture. There are ways to change that, and we are going over that too. So just notice like when you're in PowerPoint, everything looks very two-dimensional. For PowerPoint purposes, you can rearrange things to make it a more layered look, and we'll go over that. So all you do is click, left click, when you're in this moving mode with those arrows, and you just rearrange. So let's say I want to move it up here. We can move it anywhere. All right. And so another thing it came with was another, like a subtitle text box down here. You'll notice it says click to add date and other details. So what this is telling me by saying click to add is that this is a text box that's empty. So it just kind of says this text to let you know that it's existing there. Click to add something. But you'll notice when I click out or I click in it, it's empty. So when I click out, there's the text letting me know that there's a placeholder here. When I click in, there's nothing there. So let's say I want to put, you know, summer vacation. Well, let's say I had a vacation in June. Let's say it was, you know, maybe instead of using numbers, we'll do June 2021 to you know, August 2021. So you can put like dates, you know, maybe your family name, like my last name is Taunton. Let's do Taunton family. Excuse me. Spell in there. You can add a little detail here. That way when someone looks at the code well, they know what they're looking at. And this follows the same rules as the other text box. You can highlight to change font by hovering, change sizes over here. You can change size by clicking those buttons that I showed you with the up arrow and the down arrow with the font. You can also change it manually by selecting a size here. And I'm just hovering to show different sizes to select one that I like. And I'll click 24. So this is another example of there's two ways up here, selecting a number and over here by selecting up and down font buttons to change the size. So multiple ways to do everything in PowerPoint. So let's say I want to select this and there is also the option to bold. If I wanted it bolder, italicize, underlined. And this is a a text shadow. So you're going to see here a little bit more bolded on the back side of this. So it looks really nice with white because you can definitely see a distinctive and I'll go ahead and show you the before and after. So that's before. I'm selecting again and that's after. All right, so it looks a little nicer. I think it adds something a little bit articulate. All right, so that's a little bit of the text aspect. All right, so something I mentioned, and I'll bring this back down to the screen here, just moving it back down to where I like it. So once we have the text box selected, another thing that we can do is text box to fill. Let's see. So, yeah. so we were in the home tab for all of that before. So we're going to be moving drawing tools format. So when you have something selected like a text box, you get a special menu that comes up on the end. You see this drawing tools format up here, the format tab. And this, these settings change on based on what you are touching. So for here, we have drawing tools for a text box. And when I click over here, we have picture tools. So don't be surprised if this menu looks a little bit different depending on what item you're in, okay? So what we can do here is select the text box. We're just clicking on it and we can do shape fill. This is under format tab, shape styles, and we're looking at shape fill. And then we can go ahead and pick a color. So it just makes your title a little bit bolder. Like I said, it fills in that whole text box, that whole perimeter versus the highlighting that just surrounded the text. So that was the difference there. 
and it's the same thing with the font colors where they have different theme colors for you, standard colors, recent colors. You can still do eyedropper here, more field colors. You can even get pretty advanced with it and change the background to a picture or a texture or gradient. All right, so there's more options there than just plain color, but that's, that's a more advanced setting, I would say. So we're gonna skip on that today. All right, so we have text box fill. Let me check that off my checklist here. Yep, okay. So another thing I wanted to go over while we have everything here is we're gonna go to the insert tab and I'm gonna be showing you how to insert your own text box. So with this template, this text box here for summer photo album came added on already. But let's say, you know, you're using a layout where there's not a title and you want one. So in the insert tab, let me scooch my zoom menu over, just in the way. We're gonna hit under text box here. There's a there's an option here. It's gonna it says text box. So we're gonna click that. And when you click it, it'll tell you you can draw a text box anywhere. So after hitting it, we want it to look selected. It shows you this this little menu here with a pointer. And this is just to show you that it's gonna be a square. So you see the little distinct little square edge there. You're gonna click, you're gonna hold your click, and you're gonna pull open a text box. And depending on how, how much you have to write or how little or how big you want the font, you wanna make it you know, a sizable text box if you're making a title. And here I have the text box. So you're gonna go through the same thing as the title where you can type in like summer photo album. And from there you can change, you know, we can change fonts up, we can change Font, any, any aspect of it, you can change it. So then to go ahead and delete that, because we don't want two titles on this page, you can go to where you click to drag for positioning. You see the little arrow. You can click it and hit the delete button. So that's one way to get rid of something you don't want to keep. So that's just inserting a text box. It's pretty simple. You can insert some other items here, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but the text box is, is going to be one of the bigger items that you'll be inserting if you find that you want a title on something or you wanna put a caption or you wanna put any sort of text added to your photos. Okay, check that out for a minute. All right. So we'll be on to the next one. So we're on slide two, let's switch my menu again. Okay. All right, so this is the one where it has a slide title attached and you'll see add a slide title. This is cause like, this is inviting you to add something because it's blank. So when we click in it, we'll see add a slide title and we'll kind of backspace that out. And we could just put maybe, you know, palm tree one. We're not going to get too, too wild with the names here. Palm tree one. I don't really like that it has a little bit of a gradient to it. So I'm going to go ahead and change the font color to white so it's a little easier to see. So you can edit this. If you don't like the title slide there, like I said, you can click in the positioning arrow and hit delete. So I don't feel like you have to keep anything that I've added here. The whole purpose is to customize it to something you like, okay? So I do have some preloaded pictures here, some stock photos of some beachy scenes. All right. And normally when you are in a template, it's gonna invite you to add a picture and I'm gonna show you by deleting my picture what that looks like. So normally you would come across this. Click icon to add a picture. This is just a blank placeholder to add a picture. So it's really easy to add a picture this way. When you, when you do a template, it automatically populates these distinctive placeholders to just make it so easy. Because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click right on this picture icon and it pops open a menu for me to find a picture that I wanna add. All right. So for me, I have, let's see, I put it on my desktop, that class, beach pictures. And I want to put my palm tree back there. So I just double click on my palm tree picture and boom, it's back in its spot. So it just, if you see a blank square like that, it says click to add picture, just know it's so easy to add a picture. You just click, it's going to open up a menu. You're going to have maybe your family photos or, you know, summer vacation photos saved somewhere accessible on your laptop or desktop. And you're going to select them and press insert. So. And I'm not sure if I spelled it out, but to delete, let's say I wanted to delete this. All I'm doing is clicking on the photo and hitting delete, okay? 
that's how I got rid of it in case I didn't explain it. All right, I'm going to add it again. It goes right back to where it was because it remembers that I was just here. Add the palm tree back. Okay. And so moving the picture is very similar to moving the text box or moving the title like we did before. So when, you, when you're on the picture, you're going to click it. It's going to show you this little item of arrows. And you can just manually move it. Most things in PowerPoint are quite that easy where you can just click it, move it, which is nice and handy for when you're, you know, sometimes I'm picky about where I want things on my slide. I want everything just, oh, excuse me, I hit the roller ball. So I'm just, you know, clicking it. It does come up with some grid lines for you to see where like the middle of your slide is. Like you'll notice when I'm pulling this, there's a very, it might be hard to see, a very slight red dotted line. This is just letting me know that that's where the exact middle of the slide is it is very design focused, PowerPoint is. So I'm just putting it right there. Roll the ball. Okay. And so here we have some more text box for captions. I just kind of included some reminders of what we're going over. You know, just a reminder that this is sample pages. Don't feel like you have to keep anything in this template. You can you can delete anything, you can add anything. Like I said in the beginning of the PowerPoint. Pretty much PowerPoint is really just limited to the amount of creativity and time you put into it. You can pretty much design really anything within here, give it enough time. All right. So we're customizing it. All right. So what I wanted to start with here is after we went a little bit over text and text boxes, we're going to kind of explain the picture tool menu since I have this nice big picture of a palm tree here. So like I told you, when you're in the text box, the text box menu pops up. But when you're on a picture, and we just had clicked on the picture, picture tools come up over the format tab. And we're going to click the format tab. So we have a lot of options related to pictures, which is really good because we're making photo album today. And I'm going to start explaining them just a little bit. So remove background. It's not something I use very often because um, normally I'm pretty intentional with my pictures. But if you had you know, a background of a picture that's not quite what you wanted, you could select this to remove it. Um, I'll show you. Show you. It kind of auto detects. So sometimes, depending on the picture, it can be a little imprecise. So it's detecting you know, this little bit as the background. So we're just, you know, we're not going to mess with that too much because you can, you can individually mark areas to remove and keep. So you can edit this to be more precise. But this isn't something that I find I use very often, but I did want to explain in case you, know, you hit it and you wonder what what's going on. So you just discard all changes to get out of it. Uh, this is just, you know, an advanced setting for photo correcting. And then next to it, we have correction. So this is going to be something that you might regularly use depending on your photos. If you have a photo that, you know, it didn't quite turn out how you want to, you can select corrections. And this is sharpness. So it kind of blurs it to a certain extent makes it hyper-focused if you get really, you know, this is sharp at 50%, this is soft at 50%. So you have a lot of options here to edit photos. Brightness is a big one, you know, brightness and darkness, depending on the nature of your photos, especially a beach scene, you, you could definitely, you know, edit this a little bit. So this is just a lot of options that way. All right, so the next one is color. So color is gonna be a drop down as well. You click, you'll see a drop down and You'll be able to kind of hover on any of these menus like we did with font and we did with color if you just hover and give it a moment it does preview it does show you a preview of what that looks like so you'll see behind where i'm hovering the picture is changing with my hovering so that's a good way to like not commit and have to undo changes so let's say i want to you know change a photo here so normally if i click it and i'm like oh i don't like that i'd have to go up here in the left corner, it's very small. Hopefully you guys can see that with me. There's a reverse arrow, and that's how you undo something that you didn't like in case, you know, in case you do something and you're like, I do not know what I clicked. You just hit undo and that undo save. That undoes effect. Okay, so we're in color. So related to pictures, if I if I pick a color I don't like, let's say I don't like what I picked, I just click the color option there. There is an option in the adjust menu here in the adjust group where I was at click reset picture and that's just kind of reset the picture back to its original settings so if you did some funky things to it you're not quite sure what combination of adjustments you did 
make sure you're clicked on the picture and then you hit reset picture here. And that just discards all the changes you've made to the original picture, okay? So the undo up in the corner is kind of a general undo. You can undo any action you've done in PowerPoint with that, but reset picture is just related to picture. So just keep that difference in mind as you're doing that. So in addition to color, like this is, you know, brightness, softness, this is different color, uh, this is different contrast brightnesses here. So that's under corrections. And under color, we have different actual colors being applied. You'll see down here, we have, you know, lime green, we have different greens, we have color tones. So instead of adjusting a brightness or a softness, that is actual color. And then we get onto artistic effects. So artistic effects is almost like a filter. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with like Facebook or Instagram filters, but it's just kind of like a combination of effects and colors you can add to a picture. It's very similar to that. So like for this one, we have, this is supposed to look like marker. So you can see behind this menu here, as I hover, it looks like it was drawn. We got some pencil grayscale. So this is more of an artsy kind of sketch. Oh, that's, that's not the palm tree I had in mind, but yeah. Wow. So yeah, there's a lot of different, different effects you can add. And, you know, even with clicking one of these, as you can have that there, my computer's a little bit slow. I can go ahead and reset picture on those as well. That is not the right beach setting I wanted. All right. So that's just a little bit of the adjust group in the format tab. And this is bearing in mind that you're clicked on a picture, you're in picture tools up here in the format tab and the adjust group. All right. making sure my checklist we're getting through everything we want okay so another thing that is good to know and you probably use quite often too is you know being on the picture we're in the picture tools above reset pictures where i told you you can reset pictures to original settings is change picture this helps you let's say you don't like this palm tree you want a different palm tree so i this is a very small font. I hopefully you guys can see this too. It's change picture. And then when the drop menu comes down, it says from a file, from an online source. So for me, I can go and select a different picture. I, I clicked from a file because I have some, I have some files here of different, you know, different palm trees. So I'm going to select a different one and it automatically changes that picture for me. So I'm going to hit change picture to change it back. So I hit change picture from a file and I'm selecting my original there. That's a good way to switch photos. Maybe you didn't like how that one turned out. You don't like something about it. You can change there. Another thing you can do that's interesting with PowerPoint, if you need, you know, you're doing a presentation and you're doing a photo album and you just want some, maybe you want, you're doing like a birthday photo album, okay? You can click from an online source and it's gonna give you a Bing, which is a search engine similar to Google. If you're not familiar with Bing, it's going to give you a search engine for pictures and it's going to give you some topics here. So let's say you're doing a birthday one, we'll click on birthday cake. And we can go ahead and just add, you know, a, a stock photo essentially. This will pull stock photos unless you unclick this because it wants to pull Creative Commons because it doesn't want any copyright infringement or anything weird. So you can click that, see the full options. We'll click it again because we only want to use Creative Commons. But just so you know, there's more options if you unclick. Depending upon your use, you'll want to be careful with that. But if you're just using it for, you know, private personal, it shouldn't be any issue. But let's say I want to use this nice picture of a just generic birthday cake. Now I have it in there. All right, so you can go to the internet for pictures by clicking change pictures in from online source. So I'm going to put it back to my palm tree. So there's two options there. If you don't have a, if you don't have something that quite fits in your, you know, personal photos, and you have an idea of what you want to add in mind, you can hit online source. And went over recent picture. Did that. Okay. Second here. And just kind of quickly see where we're at. One second. 
seconds. Okay. Just keeping an eye on the time because I tend to be a long talker, guys. Sorry about this. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move on to slide three. And we're just going to finish up in checklist of picture tools here. We've got a lot to go here. Okay. So as I showed you, these are the placeholders to add pictures. So this is just, again, the simple thing of clicking on it, adding a picture. So what I wanted to go over on this slide was um, an interesting, let's see if I can pull it up. Let's click on this picture on the side. Picture tools, we're gonna go to the picture styles group. I guess for this, I should probably just add pictures here too. So you can kind of see the difference. It's nice to have a side by side comparison. So let me just get some items in here. So I'm just adding the pictures I have here. So we're once again in the pictures tool format tab and clicking on the photos, there's this nice, just quick and easy thing to add a nice frame to your pictures, which is really useful depending on, you know, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm in a metal frame right now. So it's adding a metal frame around here. Um, with these, with this menu here, you'll see kind of a preview of a row of selections. Just so you know, you can go to this drop down here and it'll show you individual ones. You're clicking through different rows. You see them changing. You can go up and down through them or to just see it all at once. If you're one of those people that just wants to see all their options, that's usually me. You can click this more button and you can see all of the rows at once. So you'll see here, if you hover again, you get to try on different frames. Sounds cool. And you can just try on some different frames to see what style suits what you're going for with your album, okay? So this is under format, and this is quick picture style. Okay. So that one's really easy to use. It adds definitely a little pizzazz to your pictures. You can just click a different frame, and I did put a reminder here right on the page of how to get to there. This is also in the handout, so you don't feel like you have to remember everything today. From the same menu group, you can add different things to the, let's say you like one, let's say we like this one but you're not quite happy with the, the picture border. You want it to be a different color. You can, you can update that. It's in picture border right next to it, picture effects right next to it. You can add a shadow. It's almost the same and you can edit two pictures. Like I showed you how to add the brightness and, and edit all that. You have the same editing options related to the frame. So there is a lot of options for customization. You just have to play around a little bit. There's a glow option. So if I wanted to glow around the frame, you know, everything has a use for something. And this is definitely one of the, the creative options with it. So that is picture styles. And then around here is how you edit those frames to customize. Okay. Now, another thing I wanted to go over. So you'll see here, we have three different photos. And when I bring them, like when I, when I grab one by clicking, I can move it over the other photo. So it has almost a 3D dimensional feel to it that they're, you know, this one is somehow covering this one. Let's say you have a variety of items that you wanna layer over each other and you want a different one on top. So you'll select the one you wanna change and I'm gonna select this middle one since it goes, as you can see here, atop the other. And you can bring forward or backward. Up in the, this is in the arrange group here. This is also in picture tools. And this is just, if you have multiple items going on, you have different pictures you wanna arrange this is a good place to go. So I'm, I wanna send it back. It's on the front, maybe I want it in the back. So I'm gonna to go to send backward and you can click this. If there's multiple items, you can keep sending it backwards. But if you wanna just send it all the way to the back, you wanna go drop down and send to back. And that's just sending it furthest back, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna send it back. And now when I click this and I bring it over, that other one is on top. So this is just a, a good idea to keep in mind if you have trouble, uh, arranging your items and they're not quite going how you want. Just, just know you have the ability to select the layering of them in almost like a scrapbook-esque fashion. Now, let's see here. Okay. We also have a crop option here right next to arrange. You can crop pictures to remove unwanted areas. So this is already very small, so we don't wanna to crop too much out, but you can, what we're doing is it's gonna come up with a crop menu and it'll show you these little corners. What you're gonna do is just left click, hold it down and adjust to what you see fit. Maybe I just want that much showing. 
you know. And now when I exit out of this, it just has a small one. So when you're in picture tools, this is under format and size. You can crop. You just click crop here to just bring up the menu. And you can crop to shape. There's a little more advanced features. Just know when you do the drop down, there's advanced features to keep aspect ratio to crop to a certain shape if you want a star. So just bear in mind that you can play with those advanced options. But the quickest thing to do to crop to what you want is just hit the crop button. OK? All right. Quick check and see where we're at on time. I don't want to. All right, so we have a few minutes left, and then we'll do some question and answers. So hopefully this makes your guys' lives easier and results in PowerPoint. All right, so let me quickly get through. All right, so the next one we have a front slide four. Oh, excuse me, let me go ahead and reshare my screen. Sorry about that. All right, so everyone should be able to see me now. I'm shared again. All right, we're on slide four. And one of the things I wanted to go over with you, now that we've kind of go over the design aspects of text and pictures, now we're gonna kind of deal with the logistics of the slides and overall presentation. So we're on the home tab, up in the left corner. You see some handy things over in the slide group called new slide. So let's say I, I wanna add a new slide, I click it. I have a variety of features here. So this is one of the benefits of templates is everything is very, you know, in style of what I already have going on. It's geared towards keeping the same design features I have. So I can go ahead and click any design option. Let's say I want to put some more pictures and I want some captions. So I can go ahead and add a four picture and four captions. There's a lot of different designs there. You'll, you'll probably be able to find something that fits your needs. You can just scroll right through it. Okay. So that's how you can add a new slide. Now let's say I pick the slide. I don't really like it. I just want to change it. You can go to the layout button right next door and you can pick a different layout. All right, and just easily changes it. If you were to have pictures added, it'll keep the same pictures and captions you had to a certain extent. Um, it depends on what uh, different items you included in that new layout. And then if you don't like it, you can hit reset and this will just, you know, it'll reset back to the default slide. This resets back to the original slide design. So if you just kind of change some things around on here, it'll reset that way. Let's see. Just to show you kind of an example of that, of what I mean by the reset. Let's say I just, you know, I got this picture, I moved them around, but I don't really like that I moved them. You hit reset, it brings them back to the original positions. Okay, so it just resets it to the original design. All right. Okay, so that's one way to get at slides. There is another to insert a new slide. You can go to the insert tab. Hold on one second. My mouse has decided to. There we go. Click mouse. Okay, my mouse should be back now. You can go to the insert tab and hit new slide here. So there is another new slide feature. It's the same as the other. It's just in another place that makes sense. So they try to put it in multiple spots. So if you're lost, you're not looking too hard for it. All right. And there is, and you'll notice here on the left side, we see, we see my slides. And in addition to kind of rearranging the individual slides themselves, you can rearrange the slideshow. You can rearrange it in this way, where if you see, I'm just clicking, and I'm holding, and you drag. Yeah, if it wants to. There we go. Clicking, holding, drag. So now my title page is number two. So when I'm doing my PowerPoint, it starts with number one, number two. You know, you can you can rearrange the order here by just manually dragging. The other way is hitting the view tab, hitting slide sorter view under presentation views, and manually dragging that way as well. So there is two ways to get about it. I tend to use and normal view is what we're, we're normally at. It's the default. I tend to use the slide sort of view in the normal view. OK. So there is that. Let me see here. So next slide, what I wanted to show you here was 
in the design tab, let's say you don't like the blue, I picked up top is themes. You can change the overall design. This is similar to the one I used for my original presentation. You can hover to try them on and you can click there. So design has a lot of themes and it has a drop down menu to see all of the themes here. You can just easily pick a different design if something's not working out for you. So just hover, you can try it onto your slideshow and then finally click when you're ready to use it. So that's just another quick and easy feature. All right. Check out the computer to make sure I'm not missing anything. So we went over text boxes. All right. So let me get down to it here. All right. So on slide six, an item that I wanted to show you guys was in selecting the top title box, you can pull up drawing tools because this is similar to the text box tools we, we featured. There is a way to kind of make your, come on mouse. Um, excuse me, my mouse should be back. Okay, so there is a way to, and select, hold on one second, sorry guys, my Zoom menu keeps popping up over the things that I want. Okay, so we're in tools, drawing tools, we're in the format tab. And you can add a certain extra style to your text box text in here in Word Art Styles. So this is gonna be, you find this in the format tab when you're in a text box. So it's gonna be in the same spot where we went to the interior fill of the text box to change that. You do have the options to go ahead and change the different styles of, of text art. So this is a more artsy feel to it. You can see here's some options that I'm selecting in the background. Just a little bit more design to it. So this is just another design feature to customize. But it, it's just right next to where we went to to edit the fill within the text box, okay? So any customization stuff, we're gonna go to the format tab, okay? That's called word art. So the little fancier bit to the font is called word art. And that's why it says word art styles here. So there's plain text, which is what we were working with. And then there's word art, which is just a little, you know, a little more pizzazz to it. It's just considered a graphic versus plain text. So, and let me quickly go over one last thing before we get to question and answers. And that is to change a background. So to change a background, let's say here I have this nice full screen background. You're gonna right click and then let's see, change picture. And then it's the same menu as we had in change picture up in the picture tools. Okay. So you're just right clicking, changing pictures from a file. And let's say I want to add this one. All right. So we're just changing pictures. And now that I've deleted my picture, it has a full page tool. So you're just changing pictures and it adds it to the whole screen. And that's just right clicking, change picture from file. And I'm selecting a beach file. Okay. So that is just changing background. All right, and let me see where we're at on time. Oh, just in time. All right, I try not to be too long-winded. All right, so let me go up to, all right, so I just have one more thing I want to share in my original presentation here. So I'll get right back to that. And that is resources. So we only went over, you know, a fraction of the options available in PowerPoint here today. So I wanted to recommend, you know, if this is too basic and you want more advanced settings, you want to play with more, we do have some print resources here at the library. We have a really good resource called Teach Yourself Visually, which has almost identical walkthroughs to what I'm doing here today. It's just picture by picture, how you get to something, how you select items. It's very picture based. So it's not explaining where to go. It's showing you where to go, which is a good resource. And then we have the, the famous for dummies books for office 2013 and 2016. It depends on, you know, which office you have, which office suite you have for PowerPoint. Um, I find those really easy to use. It's very, it's very simple and it doesn't try to over explain. It just walks you through it. So, you know, the, the for dummy series is really easy to use for, in, for just like the layman's terms of how to use something they do other than computer stuff. They do a variety of topics, different hobbies. You, you've, you've probably seen it before. All right, and then another thing I want to recommend is our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel here where we upload all of our technology classes. So if you just type Leesburg Public Library into YouTube, we'll come up. You'll see here under playlists, moving out a little, 
under playlists, you'll go to technology classes. We have a bunch. We have stuff about Google Docs, Gmail, Word, Excel. We have another PowerPoint. So there's a ton of resources there. We have most of our you know, demonstrations that we have in the library. We've, we've gone to a very virtual platform and we try to share the best of our programming with you guys. So let me end it there and then I'm gonna get to question and answer. So let me just quickly hit stop recording before we start discussing. One second.